All right, good morning, everyone. This is Nate G. This is a quick lesson on uh, chart patterns, how to recognize chart patterns, and the importance of learning these chart patterns so you can spot them um, as you roll. Um, so let's, uh, let's get started. The first thing we want to do is understand what the chart patterns are. Okay, so can anybody tell me what this chart pattern is that we have here on the screen? Morning, Trader Tim. And there's a little bit of a delay for me, so I'll hang tight until I get a good answer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for an ascending triangle, but they're all kind of the same idea, right? Good. And yeah, uh, Wiser, this is, I mean, this is where we get into the, the woodpecker. A lot of these chart patterns are the same. How about this one? Kind of, kind of the same, th same thing, a descending triangle, right? How about this one? In fact, we just, Dima just talked about this one. <laughs> An upside down woodpecker, <laughs> smart ass. <laughs> but, but it is true, when you're looking for short plays using TPS, uh, that's exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, right. Head and shoulders. This is a big one. And then the next one is... Oh, I gave it to you already. Sorry. I moved too fast in the presentation. And what about this one? Right? This is the, the inverted head and shoulders. Okay. Now, being able to spot these patterns and also be able to uh, understand which pattern, which way these patterns typically break is important. What about this one? Right? W or uh, double bottom, right? And then double bottom or a W. And this one. These are all pretty. These are all pretty standard chart patterns. Uh, but they're all important to to be able to know and be able to spot and be able to understand what's going on. And and we'll kind of talk about you know how they're forming. Uh, and then finally, what about this one? I threw, a, I threw one in here that was just a, a little bit harder. A descending channel, yeah. A falling wedge, yep, a falling wedge. Uh, or, and I didn't put this in here because we're going to talk about which way these, these typically break. Um, it's a, it's a, a bullish falling wedge, right? Yeah. Potential buying opportunity, Murph. That's exactly right. Um, and so, uh, how do, let's go back the ascending triangle, which way does that typically break? typically break on the ascending triangle. That's correct, Trish. Up, right? How about the descending triangle? 
on the descending triangle, which way does that typically break? Poor boy, bearish, yeah, down, right. Uh, head and shoulders, which way are we breaking typically? Head and shoulders, right? It's going lower if it breaks this neckline. Whoop, what did I just do? There we go. Inverted head and shoulders. Obviously the reverse, right? So if it breaks this neckline, we're, we're breaking up. And then if we go to our uh, W or double bottom pattern, typically we are, we are breaking up, right? The uh, double top pattern, typically that's going to break down. And then this is the, this is the one I just kind of gave away a minute ago, uh, the falling wedge, which way is this one typically breaking? The old falling wedge. Yeah. Well, there's there's some there's some uh, differing opinions on the falling wedge, right? And I gave it away earlier when I said a this is a bullish falling wedge, right? So that's typically gonna go. It's typically gonna break to the upside. Not always, of course, but. You know that's that's how you would you would play these, and so uh, I couldn't draw them all and get them all into this presentation, right? But what I do recommend um, is where did that go? Oh, I just have it up. What I do recommend is having you know there are uh, tons of books and graphics and other things that you can look up and find that will help you learn what these chart patterns are, how to spot them, what they typically do, and in many cases, how to play them. So, you know, just go in Google stock chart patterns. Um, you can also buy books and posters that you can have up on your wall that just show these patterns and how they typically will break and how to and how to play them you know where your stop loss is where where your entry point is right and what we talk about a lot is you know the head and shoulders pattern or the and what we talk about more often than not is the rising or sorry the ascending triangle right is the pattern that we're playing in our TPS system, right? Or, or one of the patterns we're playing. And so being able to spot these patterns within, uh, spot these mini, mini patterns within the larger pattern, we were talking about that a little bit yesterday, uh, is, is important um, for fine tuning your trading uh, ability, right? Being able to see see what's happening inside the larger time frame or the larger candles, right? Okay, so uh, let's talk about, we've talked a little bit about breakouts on these chart patterns and then we're gonna go and we're gonna find some of these chart patterns in, in the wild, right? But an ascending triangle breakout we've already established uh, typically will break to the top side as it breaks this uh, resistance level here at the top, right? And so how can we how can we play that? Right? We can scalp on the break, right? We could pick up off this lower trend line, right? Or oh, I'm sorry. So breakout. So as we get to breakouts, I'm jumping around this presentation a little bit. Um, how do we know if it's, if it's going to be a good breakout or if it's going to be a, a, uh, a fake out, right? Yes. Candles, Tom or Tom, uh, uh, candles do play a role within the patterns and we'll get into that a little bit towards the end of this, uh, presentation. Um, but when you get a breakout of these patterns, you always want to see, uh, uh, volume come in and confirm, uh, that that breakout, right? So looking at volume, not volume profile, although you can see it on a volume profile as well, but on regular volume based on time, 
Uh, you want to see a breakout that happens on on volume, and that can kind of help confirm that breakout. So here they are in the head and shoulders pattern, right? As that break happens, we want to see that on volume. That means other people are also buying that pattern, that breakout, right? And so how do we know if it's a strong versus a weak breakout? Well, we just talked about that, right? So a strong breakout is going to be on high volume and a weak breakout is going to be on low volume, right? So if you're playing a breakout and you're not sure whether it's going to be a, uh, a confirmed breakout, one of the ways that you can help confirm that is by the, the high volume candle on that initial breakout. And that's if you're playing a one minute or a five minute, um, you're going to get higher than normal volume on that breakout, right? So that's people buying and it's also people stopping out that have set their stops that are short, right? Or long or vice versa, right? Having to buy that, buy that back. All right. Nate Bear's in the house. So this is where we get into candles. So uh, Thom asked about, um, do candles play a role, right? Well, yes, they do. So if this is our ascending triangle uh, pattern and we get our breakout and we get high volume breakout, Right, so this is our third confirmation. Our first, our first confirmation is obviously the visual breakout. Our second confirmation is does it come on high volume, right? And then our third confirmation is what is the sh what is the overall shape of this candle, right? And yes, Karine, they, it, this works on all time frames. And so, what is the overall formation of this candle? This candle pushed up through on high volume and closed near the high. Okay, that's that's three levels of uh, of of the of that candle, right? So the, that's those three confirmations that this is a potential uh, good breakout, right? Strong breakout. We've got a push through the visual. We've got push through on high volume, and then we've got a candle that holds uh holds its form so what's a strong what's a weak breakout still on high volume right the this is the market makers running running this up through and we're shown either there are no buyers or there are plenty of people pushing this down on this candle right so this is still high volume but it's pushed up and immediately was pushed right back down Right, so this is a weak breakout, but we still have a high volume confirmation. Right, so that 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 third piece, what does that candle look like? Right, and then understanding what's happening within that candle. Right, it has a high upper wick. Right. Right, and it, that could be market makers running running stops. Uh, it could be market makers seeing if there's buyers above this level, right? And so it, that which which would then be a low volume breakout, right? So you would you would see you would see price come up, uh, and you'd have a long candle for a minute before that candle closed, and but you wouldn't see any volume coming in, and then all of a sudden that would stuff right back down. Um, and that would mean market makers were trying to run it up to see if they could entice uh, buyers. And then they realized they couldn't. There was no, uh, no buyers to support that increased price. And it came right back down. Uh, and we'll do another presentation some other time on market makers and, and how, to, how to factor that in. So what if you miss the breakout? or only only scalp the break and want to get into a longer term trade on this or a larger portion of the move. And we talked about this yesterday uh, and also again on Friday. Um, we're going to try and enter on the retest. Okay, so after we break a level, a support, a resistance level, 
that resistance becomes support. So many times, or a support level becomes resistance. So many times, if you miss the break, you're going to get a retest or a back test of that uh, support or resistance level or trend line level, and you can enter there. So here's a head and shoulders pattern. We get a break, we get a retest, and then we get a go. Right, and a continuation of the move here is the same idea. We can break that neckline, and and keep in mind, you know, a, a lot like this uh, head and shoulders pattern, you, you know, it's they're not always straight lines straight across, right? So the 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 shoulders could be offset, uh, you know, which makes the neckline offset. But as we're you know learning these patterns, you know, this is just sort of the best way to visualize it. Right, and then there's there's your uh, descending triangle. You get the break, and you can enter on the retest. So the yellow dots are are retests. So anybody have any questions about that? Um, we will. I'll jump out of the presentation here, and we will look for these in real life. So today I had this pulled up earlier. Obviously it's a failed one. But if we're looking at Rivian right here, what pattern do we see? Anyone? Head and shoulders, yeah. Now, I was I was just before I came on. I was looking for examples of spotting patterns in the wild, right? Because they're not as easy as just those you know lines to to spot. Uh, obviously, Rivian is not you know Rivian is a beast right now. It is the the honey badger. Um, so we would not want to short this. Uh, even though I, I've, I felt tempted here this morning. But this is our head and shoulders pattern, right? That's our head and shoulders pattern. You know, this is our neckline. A break of that neckline is a good entry, right? Break this neckline, which also just happens to be uh, VWAP as well. And then you know, your first target, at least for me, if I, as the way I play these is my first target would be down here. And then my next target would be probably the, the lower day. So that next target would, but I would take the majority of my position off, um, on the test as it meets the, this lower shoulder, this start of this, uh, this lower shoulder or inside neck or whatever you want to call that. And then I would take off the rest of my position, maybe leave a trailer on for a gap close in that particular situation, right? It's pretty straightforward, yeah. But also understanding that these don't always work, right? They, they you know, that this would have worked from the break of this trend line <clears throat> to this green line here, right? But uh, once we get rid of that, I mean, we bounced from there and uh, went up and made a new high. So um, <clears throat> knowing when that pattern uh, breaks down is, is pretty important, right? Um, so these things are ever-changing and they're not always uh, guaranteed. So you could have scalped this, uh, but because Rivian is so strong right now, um, it's, it's not going down. There's too, it's too many, too many shorts still in this that have to get out, uh, especially before the weekend. So, but here we talk about, we talk about a break and retest, right? You can see the level of this pattern. You can see we, we broke out, we broke the high, we retested that area quickly and we went a little more, 
we've retested it again, you usually get two, and now let's see what happens. So that's that, that's that retest. PMW, let's look at PMW. Did I type that in right? PWM. I was like, really? P W Wow. P W M. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this is a good example of one that's not uh, uh, as as clean and as obvious, right? But we've got do 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 right? We've got a W, so that's not a true double bottom, but it's a W pattern forming, right? Anybody else have uh, uh, some other chart patterns that they can see out there? This is a good exercise. Uh, if you remember yesterday on Adobe, God, Adobe's working so well. Yesterday on Adobe, this is this is one this is a really great example. Uh, we are all playing the 195 minute chart on Adobe, right? And if you were in here yesterday, you'll remember. Let's remove the drawings, and then let me get rid of the point of control here, so we can make this a little clearer. Okay, so in Adobe on this beautiful. 195 minute chart, right? We are trying to get in, you know, our, our support level for this is somewhere down here around 472.31 area. Uh, anything kind of around that, we'd like, to, we'd like to take an entry for the larger move of this TPS pattern, right? And so are we gonna see a pattern develop in here? uh probably not right that that of of those reversal patterns that that we were just looking at but when we drill down to yesterday on the one minute you know we were getting a gap down and we're getting close to our uh, support level and we had another level in here at 175 this is a vp level but a, a level to pick it up off of right and we want to go long for the larger move, right? For the move up above 491, 492, right? And as this was developing, let's go to the replay, right? We started to put in a little bit of a W pattern, especially if we go to the to the five. Well, let's let's stay on the one. Right, we've come, we've come in, we've put in a low. I actually bounced this. We've come in, we've put in a lower low, and now we're bouncing back up. And so now that we've created this W, right? Either the W is going to go, or what's the next pattern we can begin to create? And this is this is what I what I played because I was looking to play this long on a larger term play, longer term play, you know, out two to three weeks because I want this 195 to play out, but I'm looking for a good entry here. So as this is developing, I'm looking to see if we're gonna develop a shoulder, right? And then if we can develop a shoulder, You can either enter on that shoulder or wait for it to break that neckline. And it, it consolidated for a while, but the play was, and then it finally went, but the play was, as we start to look more on a five minute chart, right? The play was moving that to here. This is our head and shoulder, inverted head and shoulders pattern for what played into a move up into the close and then a move up this morning. And it's looking great, right? So within the 195 minute chart, 
we can use these patterns, the W, the inverted head and shoulders, or vice versa if we're trying to go long to the high side, right? To figure out good entries for this longer term chart. So I used a one in five minute chart to get in to a 195 minute squeeze chart. And that's that gets into that multi time frame analysis. I know I want in on this 195. What are my support levels? Where would I like to take this? And then when they're coming into that on the one and five minute, you know, what's a reversal pattern? You know, is the chart showing me a reversal pattern for a good entry on a longer, larger term time frame? Larger term time frame? That's probably not a phrase, but you, you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Marvel double W pattern. Probably on a one or a five minute. Let's see. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. There's your W. Right? And that W was a true double bottom. That not all of them are, right? Can anybody spot a uh, ascending or descending triangle somewhere in the market? And point one out. And I didn't really, uh, I didn't really run. Ooh, man. Did you all buy that after we, <laughs> did, you, did you all buy PWM after we talked about that? Being a W? <laughs> that, uh, it, that looks like the old, uh, like, I don't know if you ever were, anybody here was in, uh, another there was another trading service um that would trade these smaller caps and there were so many people in the room um that when the uh teacher slash guru whatever would say okay i'm getting in uh pwm here at uh 850 right everybody would just hit buy market orders uh because they were all new traders right you were in at eight eight fifty Asian trader. Great trade. That's nice. That's wonderful. Um, and here, this is also, you know, we talk about. Anyway, let me finish my thought. And so, they he you know he would grab it at eight fifty. All the newbies would market order in you know a few thousand shares, uh, and then this thing would run up. And then of course he wouldn't say so, but he would dump it at 10 into all those buyers right and then so everybody would get trapped you know holding the bag and of course this thing would reverse um and uh go south and everybody would be trapped you know having been marketed in at at 10 uh versus 850 um and everybody be in trouble that's what this that's what this chart looks like to me right now but that's pretty funny but here's the other thing, right? We talk about, you'll hear D-Man and myself and Nate, all, Nate B, all talk about, you know, a breakdown and reclaim, right? So if you're playing this gap up, we put in this low, which, it, which a breakdown and reclaim is, is essentially forming a W, right? This pattern, right? Because we had the breakout and, or the gap up, I'm sorry, and the low, the pattern breaks down below 815, right? And so uh, the pattern broke and quickly reclaimed. And you'll even see, if we get close enough here, you'll even see a quick break, a reclaim, and then a retest. It's not perfect where the line is drawn, but you get the idea, right? We reclaimed the pattern, we quickly tested. So what broke support, pushed back up through support, you know, what is resistance now becomes support again as we push through it. 
tests it, and then goes, right? So watching for these retests and reclaims, those are two words you'll hear us talk about a lot when, when it comes to volume profile, right? Retest and reclaim. A retest, so if this pattern, if we, it was going to break and retest, Let's, I'll ask this, I'll ask this as a question. Let's do this. Okay. So if this is the pattern we're looking at, right? And we have a break of the pattern and we said, I'm looking for this to retest. We've broken 811. I'm looking forward to retest and go. What does that mean? Is that bullish or bearish? Tom thinks bullish. Anybody else? If I say we've broken 811 and I'm looking for a retest and go. Nina got it. So I've broken this level. I'm looking for it to retest and go. Right? If I say I'm watching for it to reclaim, it gets back up into the pattern and then it can retest, but it has to reclaim the pattern and then go. That would be bullish. Right? So retesting a level is just coming back in and testing that that break was uh, valid. Right, so this one didn't retest, it reclaimed. And then once it reclaimed, so let me play this out. Once it reclaimed, it retested right here. And then it, it test, retested it again. You know, it just kind of consolidated here and then went. So that's kind of the difference between reclaim and retest. And it took me forever to get that as well because they're, they're very similar. No, uh, Laura, a retest is, uh, is essentially you've broken an area and you're just retesting it. Uh, and so you're coming back to it and then you you in 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 theory you're going to go from there whether that's bullish or bearish read on g r r r all right are you a small cap trader asian trader oh i like that pattern a lot i mean this is this is the tps pattern Right, but on a one minute and a small cap. Right? Everybody see that? Trend, pullback, pattern. Squeeze. And we even had a squeeze right here. I bet, well, maybe not on the five minute. No squeeze on the five minute? No. But see, we can we can play these patterns on a on a one minute or a five minute chart as well. You know that we're playing on a daily pattern on a daily chart. They all work. Does anybody have any other patterns they want to take a look at? Yeah, some days the small caps can uh, can be great. Let's look at LVS. Was this the one? Uh, uh, what? Let's say you wanted LVS on the on how long? LVS on the daily. 
Sorry, this is Donnie was looking at this, wasn't he? Or D man, sorry. So we were looking at this here, right? Kind of. Yeah, and like we like we were talking about the other day, you know, this is a this is a chart reading, chart patterns, volume profile is a uh is an art form because it's not always exact, right? Um, you have to kind of be able to spot the patterns. Um, so this could be two things, right? And I think this is what you're you're talking about. Who asked me this this question? Um, Tommy, right? Fifty four. You're looking for fifty four eleven on the on the daily. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're asking, but this is what I see, right? We see our head and shoulders pattern. Uh, Donald was talking about this. Uh, D man was talking about this a little while ago. We've got this uh, neckline we've created, right? The shoulder has rolled. You know, let's maybe try looking at this on a 65 minute chart with that in there, right? So we've broken on a gap down, and now we're potentially. Right, we're potentially retesting this breakdown level, right here. We're potentially retesting that for a continued roll lower. However, do you see another pattern setting up in there? Oh, that a a, a, a bullish pattern. Tommy, do you see it? Do you see anything in there on my screen? I'm I'm not marking it up, so you know. So this is a potential retest, and this is why this is an art form, right? This is a potential retest for a further roll lower, potentially, right? And I'm not I'm not giving investment advice here. I'm just I'm just we're spitballing. Does that make sense? Tommy, you don't. Okay, you don't see one. Okay, so this is where this is where you know we'd want to make sure that we were being careful, right? I see a pretty serious support level and a double bottom, actually a triple bottom in this in this case here, right? So that's not to say this isn't this head and shoulders inverted head and shoulders pattern or sorry regular head and shoulders pattern isn't going to work and this is just a back test and gap close right you'll hear us talk about a gap close a lot most gaps get closed at some point or another right so generally we've gapped down so if we look at this on let's say a five minute chart oh sorry let me fix that we look at this on a five minute chart, we gap down, you know, we're thinking, okay, we've put in a, we put in a little W, right? And then an inverted head and shoulders says this is the other shoulder and we've come back up and we've gap closed, right? So there's our gap close level. Now what happens here is, is, is the question, right? Are we going to catch buyers and are we going to push up, right? Because we, came and hit a double bottom almost to the tick right or in the larger pattern are we just coming back up to retest this trend line and are we going to roll and you can see these patterns develop okay so on the larger time frame right we have a large what looks like head and shoulders Okay, so oh gosh, yes, we want to play this this large head and shoulders on the on the daily. Well, if you come into this section here, right, this shoulder on a smaller time frame, let's go to like a 15 minute, 
Okay, so within that circle, that's not very clean, but do, do you see what's setting up, what did set up there? In that, in this circle? And it's not as clean, so it might not be as easy to see, but if we look at it on a 30 minute, right? This is the larger pattern. Yeah. Right, so these patterns develop within larger patterns you know a daily head and shoulders i mean even on the head right if we look at the head of the daily right which is in yellow oh why don't i change my color that'll help right so the head and shoulders head on the daily chart is the yellow and then what do we see in within the head right on the 30 minute chart. A dirty head and shoulders. <laughs> so do you see how when we talk about playing patterns and playing volume profile levels on lower time frame charts, within the confines of a larger time frame play. That's kind of what I'm, that's kind of the, the thing I'm trying to get across here yesterday and today is we can spot these levels trying to play a daily or 195 or 130 minute TPS pattern chart within, you know, on a one minute or a five minute by looking at these chart patterns and reading these volume profile levels for good entry points. TD. What time frame are you looking at here? I mean, if we come down into, we might be able to find it on a one minute. Oh yeah, here you go. So let's come in a little tighter. Okay, we've got our top here. Right, and we're just about to break. Arlong, that's a great question. Does the additional head and shoulders formations add weight to the direction? Um, I, uh, no, not necessarily. Um, it's just so when you see we we were we were talking about how candles are formed and hollow candles and solid candles yesterday so let's find i want to go to a good pattern here let's see and we'll and we'll draw this uh together so let me let me get something that's a little weird no Bear with me for a second. Okay. So let's, what what moved a lot yesterday? Let's say open, close. No, I want, I want something with some, some range. Went up, it went down. Anybody give me a, let's see, did we get some TTD? 
So let's, yeah, let's look at yesterday TTD. That's perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go to TTD and we're gonna look at yesterday. So let's get rid of, where's the close? Close is right there, whoops. So let's do that. Okay, so this is TTD's uh, one minute chart for um, yesterday, okay? So this level here is our open. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the daily candle off to the side, right? So there's our open, right? There's our close. So those are our open and close levels. Here's our low. <laughs> and right there's our high. Okay. So is this going to be a green candle or a red candle? Or sorry, a hollow candle or a closed candle? So if on the daily chart, our candle is going to look like this. Oh boy. Okay, that's going to be the body of the candle. That's the lower wick. And that's the upper wick. Whoops. Right? And if I get rid of these lines here. Right? Because we have our open. We have our close. We have our high. And we have our low. So all of this price action, right? All of this price action here on the daily makes this one candle. Right? So, and this happens on a five minute chart, you know, it's, it's these candles are gonna make, make up that five minute chart. Right, and then the next one is, and I know this is fairly obvious, but then these candles are gonna make the next five minute and so on and so forth. And so, you know, what happens within each candle, it, you know, the head and shoulders pattern within a head and shoulders pattern, you're gonna find, you know, within a daily head and shoulders pattern, like how many patterns can we find in this one TTD, uh, you know, chart? What single one minute daily chart, you know, we can find we can find tons, right? Okay, we have a head and shoulders, right? We have a descending wedge, right? We have, I mean, there's, there's, there's just tons of them in here. We have a flag. Oops, sorry. Right, so within each time frame, there are tons of these patterns. And so they don't necessarily uh, make it the larger time frame stronger or weaker. They're just, it's just part of price action. So, so for those that were asking about candles, uh, candlesticks yesterday, does 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 this make sense? This one, this day on the one minute made this candle on the daily.
Uh, D- Cal Cali H D Man is just uh, Donald Williams, I think, and it's just his personal until we can we can get it set up in here so that we can we can post in here. Uh, re- sorry, record in here. So <clears throat> this is the candle I just drew essentially, right? Small body, not essentially, it is the candle I just drew, sorry. But so this is this is the daily chart right here. Right? We have this body, right? And it's solid because it is down on the day, right? It closed lower than it opened. But we opened, we spiked up really quick, right? Then we spiked way down and came back up. And then closed at the base. So that's why it's a solid candle, because it is, the close was lower than the open. That's the difference between the solid and, and so today we opened right and then i think we uh, pulled down spiked up and then now we haven't closed this candle yet but now we're trading at 75.90 which is if i go back to the one minute here ttd opened it pulled just a little bit spiked up and now is consolidating through here and so that's that's that formation of that daily candle. So that hollow candle is uh, we are above our open price. In theory, we are in green and then a solid candle is we are below, we're finishing below our open price. And that's usually red. Now, if you get a gap up, you know, you could get a solid candle. Let's find one. Like this one, for instance, this candle right here. It's an open candle, which means we, we gap down, spiked low and finished higher during this day than we opened right which makes it hollow but it's a red candle because it is below yesterday's close so overall for that day it was red uh, and you'll see sometimes you'll get like this one you'll get a solid green candle so that means we opened here and we closed here but it's green because yesterday's or the day before's trading was lower. So overall, the the position or the, the stock is, is green on the day because it goes from the previous day's open. Or oh, close, I'm sorry, close. Does that help on the candlesticks? Tommy, can you show how you get to the gaps on TradingView? What gaps? on the chart. God, yeah, Rivian is just a beast, isn't it? Let's go here. What a beast, what a beast. And this is a great, when we were looking at LVS earlier, right? This is, um, you know, head and shoulders pattern on the one minute. And then it broke the neckline and then put in a double bottom, boom, boom, and then went 
So really double bottom or, oh, I changed the size of that. How did that happen? All right, we just go boom, 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 boom. Put in a W, double bottom. Gaps on charts. So how do I get to how I get to gaps on trading view? Well, gaps uh, just happen, right? So you know what's like here. This is Marvel, right? This is the close of two days ago here, and this is the open here and so this space is a gap and they just happen within trading so there's nothing unless I'm not understanding your question correctly so I apologize if that's the case what do you mean by it's a beast I just mean it is <laughs> this is what I mean by it's a beast <laughs> this uh, it just can't be stopped. This is a 65 minute chart. And can anybody tell me why Rivian is really just running without much pullback? And the answer is not news. Nice, Stella. Mark D, why do why do gaps always get filled? Um, market psychology. I mean, they don't always, but the general um, consensus, the general theory is, uh, gaps always get filled. Uh, it's just that at some point, most gaps will get filled. So, for instance just just through price action right so you see this see this gap down here uh and part of it's and i'm talking about this gap down right here right yeah it doesn't get filled for quite some time but it eventually gets filled and obviously it gets filled in overnight training trading because it gapped up there but um Generally, when we have a gap like that, especially through overnight trading, there's not a lot of volume in between to to support it. So if price action during the day works down into that space, it's going to it in ge generally going to move down into an area where there's more people to support it. Right. And then buying a gap close, if a, if a, a, a stock starts to drift into that gap, buying at that gap close point is just human psychology because people play gap closes it's just it's almost the same reason that you know uh using vwap as support when you're above it and as resistance when you're below it works because it's human psychology because a lot of people play vwap so if you're using it as support and it's it's the average price you know on the day but if you're using it as your support level um other people are too and so you say oh it just seems to bounce there all the time well well yeah because people are buying it there that's the human psychology side of the of the the market i know you did d man <laughs> Most most likely because you're uh, you're uh, taking in huge chunks of uh, of Rivian into your account, so the shorts just can't get a hold of it. Copper Joe, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, I get to get back to that question. I mean, there's there's a lot going into to Rivian right now, but uh, it, it's just beasting a lot because it's. Um, it's got high short float and the higher it goes, the more shorts are having to stop out, which is creating more buying. 
Um, that's why these short floats can really, high short floats can really get going. So, all right, does anybody have any, any more questions for me? Um, I'm gonna cut the recording here in a second and uh, I'll stay on for a few more minutes and uh, answer questions and I'll leave my screen up as well um, just so there's something for you guys to, to look at. And if anything comes up, I can easily jump on the mic or or if D-Man's here, he can uh, he can jump on the mic as well. Hundred and sixty k loss on Rivian. Yeah, I wish. No, I don't wish I could say that. I wish I could say that and think nothing of it. That that's what I wish. <laughs> uh. All right, I'm stopping the recording here.